guys, what's up? So, last time that we played, um, there were two new murders, which is super exciting, um, but it's apparently been a week since they've been murdered and we've just kind of been lounging, like so, upon our fancy couches and things. Um, we need to find pig's heads. Uh, so that we can do some experiments on them, but the problem is is that he gave us a bunch of paperwork about the murders Because he's apparently been super busy and uh, I totally accidentally didn't read them <laughs> I skipped through them. So now we have to read them. So this is gonna start off pretty boring because I think these are long Yeah, uh, which one to read first? Let's read this one first Okay Note on the murder of Catherine Eddowes, 46 years old, height 5 foot, occasional prostitute. She had a regular relationship for 7 years with one John Kelly, a man of no regular employment and about the same age as the victim. The victim was found dead at 1.44am on September 30th by PC Watkins, who was on his rounds. He secured the area by calling to the watchman of the warehouse located some feet from the crime scene. According to the doctor, who'd arrived on the scene at 2.18am, the victim had just been dead for a half hour. Unlikely, but we know from experience how hard it is to precisely establish the time of death when the corpse has been very mistreated. Cause of death hemorrhage due to a throat wound, the medical examiner also confirmed that additionally, the extractions committed on the corpse were done post-mortem by a right-handed man possessing a long-bladed knife. The victim was subject to numerous mutilations. The victim was found stretched out in a dark corner of Mitre Square, a notorious meeting spot for prostitutes and their clients because of its remote, poorly lit location. It should be noted that the victim was freed from the Bishopgate Street Police drunk tank at 1 o'clock in the morning. Oh, Mitre Square was visited at 1.30 a.m. by P.C. Watkins coming from Mitre Street and at 1.42 a.m. by P.C. Harvey coming from Church Passage. The two police constables didn't see anything suspicious in the area, but it should be noted that P.C. Harvey didn't enter into Mitre Square, unlike P.C. Watkins. The watchman who came to lend a hand to Watkins at the time of the discovery of the body had been awoken during the time of the crime. His door is located a few feet from the spot where the victim was dying and didn't hear anything until the police's call. Firstly, we must note that the clothing worn by Catherine Eddowes was very characteristic. I think in particular the patterned green chintz skirt as well as the white men's vest. A few of her possessions and a few of her possessions. Uh. Hold on, self. You need you need a sip. Ugh, okay. A few of her possessions, including the thimble, were found around the corpse. The white apron was found on the corpse with a part missing. Thus, this missing part, previously re-sewn, thus ensuring authenticity, was found at 2.55 a.m. on the night of the murder by P.C. Alfred Long, who states that the object wasn't there at his preceding patrol at 2.20 a.m. The piece of bloody apron was found in the entrance hall leading to the stairs of 108 to 119 Wentworth Model Dwellings on Goulston Street. At the right of the entrance, just above the apron, was found the following inscription in chalk. The Jaws are not the men that will be blamed for nothing. The Jews are not the men that will be blamed for nothing. Why does it say Jaws? The Wentworth Model Dwellings building being almost exclusively occupied by Israelites and Goulston Street being the site of a very popular, much frequented market, he decided to erase the inscription before the day broke. Probably a good idea. Kate Eddowes' belongings, wearing at the time of her murder, black straw bonnet trimmed in green and black velvet with... Oh, God. Uh, black beads, black strings worn tied to the head, black cloth jacket trimmed around the collar, skirts patterned with... Michaelmas? What is that? Michaelmas? Michaelmas? What is that? I don't have anything I can write it down on right now. Dang it! I want to look it up later. Well, one of you guys maybe can Google it, because I'll probably forget. And golden lilies. Man's white vest of matching buttons down the front, brown Lindsay bodice, black velvet collar with brown buttons down the front. Where is it undergarment? Where is it undergarment? Pair of beds, lace up boots, mohair laces, right boot repaired with red thread, piece of red gauze, two unbleached calico pockets, tape strings, blue stripe bed tickling. Pocket. I feel like I don't need to know all of this. Two small blue bags, two short black clay pipes, one tin box containing tea, sugar, white rag, three cornered, one piece of mustard tin containing two pawn tickets, one in the name of Emily Barrel, 52 White's Road, dated August 31st, 9D, for a man's flannel shirt. The other is in the name of Jane Kelly of 6 Dorset Street and dated September 28th, 2S, for a pair of men's boots. Both addresses are false. 
printed handbill, portion of a pair of spectacles, one red mitten. Okay. Number two. That was long. How many pages was that? One, two, three, four, five. It's the longest thing we've received so far. How long are you? Only three pages. Okay, we can do this. Okay. Let's adjust, adjust our Sherlock hats. Let's take a sip of the coffees. What do you want, phone? It keeps beeping at me, sorry. Okay. Note on the murder of Liz Stride at Dutfield's Yard. Certain information that I have collected must be verified. Liz Stride, nicknamed Long Liz. Awkward. 45 years old, height 5 foot 5, occasional prostitute. She lived for the past three years in a stormy relationship with a certain kidney, a waterside laborer 36 years of age, whom she left a few days earlier. She charged him with assault, but failed to appear in court, and the case was thrown out. The victim was discovered dead by one Louis Deemschitz. At 1 o'clock in the morning on September 30th, the man's first thought was to verify if his wife in the building next door was still alive before sounding the alarm. The two doctors who came at the police's request to the scene of the crime in the moments after the discovery of the corpse put the time of death after 12.46 a.m. Cause of death, hemorrhage due to a throat injury. Same. The weapon was a small knife with a large blunt edge. The verification of this statement is necessary. Could this wound have been caused by another tool? Yeah, because the other one was a long, sharp knife, right? Neither the body nor the clothes were damaged, soiled, or disturbed by the killer. The right hand was open, stained with blood, and resting on the chest. The left hand was on the ground, partially closed, holding a packet of pastilles. The location of the discovery was a courtyard called Dutfield's Yard, whose doors lead to Burner Street in Whitechapel. The victim was found stretched out on the ground a few inches from the wall of one of the buildings served by this courtyard, the International Workings Men's Club. Wor workings? The International's Workings Men's Clubs? Anyway, this association, composed mainly of Jews originally from Russia and Poland, were organizing a conference that night on the subject, Why Should Jews Be Socialists?, presided by Mr. Morris Eagle. The meeting ended around 11.30 p.m., but many members remained to debate and sing within the premises of the association. An American present that evening declared to have been in the courtyard at 12.20 a.m. and went into the street and didn't see anything unusual. He then returned back inside to the club, but his estimation of the time spent outside is approximate at best. Two witnesses were quoted by the press, Constable Smith, who was doing his rounds in the area on the night in question, and a Hungarian by the name of Schwartz who made a statement at the police station accompanied by an interpreter because he does not speak English. The transcriptions of these statements by the press should be treated with caution. It would be advisable, if at all possible, to consult the exact content. Observe the clothing worn by the victim, as well as her possession at the time of the discovery of the body. Clothing, long black cloth jacket, fur trimmed around the bottom with a red rose and white maidenhair fern pinned to it. Black skirt, black crepe bonnet, dark brown velveteen bodice, petticoats, chemise, stockings, boots, handkerchiefs, thimble, wood, wool, not wood. In the pocket of her underskirt, a key, a small piece of lead pencil, six large and one small button, a comb, a broken piece of comb, a metal spoon, a hook, as from a dress, a piece of muslin, or one, one or two small pieces of paper. Okay, that's done. We read, we read them, Sherlock. We read them. So... You still haven't left, Watson? Wow. 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 Um, yeah, what do I need to do? I'm just gonna go in here and mess up all your stuff. What do you think about that? Oh, the door even closed. Um, well, yeah, I'm just gonna leave from here. So there. Where do I need to go? I just need to be in Whitechapel, right? I just need to find a butcher, so where... Where's a butcher gonna be? Mm, I feel like the... Well... This area feels more... Maybe over here. More. What a ridiculous idea to have asked Holmes for something uh, to, to do. Find Lucy? Dang it. Where on earth am I going to find what he wants? Perhaps that kind Lucy will be able to help me. Yeah, Lucy's sweet. She's she's a cutie patootie. Maybe she'll help me out. Oh god oh. Watch where you're going, child. Ah, uh, should have just should have just gone with my initial inclination and gone to the police station like I always do. Hey Dapper Dan! I have nothing to ask. Of course you don't, because he's so dapper. What? What What? 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 Sorcery! That was so magical. Um, 
I need to go now. But that was great. That was that was the best magic trick ever. Uh, oh, maybe she's at work. Oh, but now I have to walk by Magic Dan. Where is Magic Dan? He disappeared! Now I'm scared of Dapper Dan. Okay. Hey, Ralph. Good evening, Lucy. But is something wrong? Good evening, Dr. Watson. Yes. It's my uncle. He's no longer with us. Please accept my condolences, miss. Thank you, Doctor. But why are you here? Can I help you? Tell me about them butchers. I know my your uncle just died and that's like super sad, strange, but I need infos. But do you know if there is a butcher's or slaughterhouse in the area where pigs are killed? Uh, yes, Fletcher's the man. He was a regular client, owner of a little butcher's shop not far. But Miss Bella didn't want him to come, as long as he didn't treat his awful sickness. Can you point to his awful shop sickness. on my map? Certainly. Am I going to go talk Do to a sick dude? Do you know anything about the two latest murders? Oh, goodness me, no. All the girls in the neighbourhood are terrified. Who will be next? That's what everyone is asking. That makes Goodbye, sense. Lucy. Until next time, perhaps, Doctor. Perhaps? Oh, Lucy! Just stay inside! Doug oh! Oh, she just gave me the eyebrows. I gotta go. Today is weird, apparently. Oh, I'm scared of Dapper Dan. Okay. Oh, how was that creepy little kid singing? Ah, there's Fletcher's butcher shop. Closed Let's go in. Oh. Due to illness. If the proprietor is ill, the butcher's block is probably not being used. Perhaps I can use it. Let's get this in here. E? Yes. If Fletcher is ill, I love ill, that it's conveniently right next to the clinic. <laughs> okay. Um. Hey. <gasps> hey, buddy. Good evening, Doctor Watson. Best friend. Good evening, Doctor Gibbons. I have come to Shalak see you would be because so I was wondering if, if he knew by how any well chance, get along. you happen to have a patient by the name of Fletcher. A butcher who would have relinquished his shop due to illness. An illness caught during nocturnal encounters. If you catch how did my you, How would you know that? Fletcher is one of the regulars at the clinic. Mercury treatment against syphilis. A night with Venus, a lifetime with Mercury. Oh, he left London oh, a fortnight sad. ago for the fresh country air. Why is he of interest to you? I need oh, his no shop. reason. I'm more interested in using his shop, only for an hour or so. Would he have left his keys with family in the area? He has none left, but he must have left Hardiman, the cat's meat seller, to oversee the his beep, shop. Beep guy? They're in business. They're good friends. Do you know where he can be found? No, but wander around the neighbourhood and listen for his beep beeps. He often passes in front of the clinic. Yeah, beep beep. Besides... Besides what? Uh... Everyone... Sick guy. Everyone is letting me down. Do you know that feeling? <sighs> Just... <sighs> oh no! Danny! Oh no! God, this game is getting worse! It's me that you're looking for, sweetheart! Incorrect! Oh, do um, you know where actually, Hardiman is? No. I am looking for the cat food seller, Hardiman. Hardiman? Poor Hardiman? It isn't quitting time for him yet. That gives me some time to wander the streets before he shows up and with him all the cats here about. Uh. Do you know where he lives? Sure. And for a copper, I might even tell you. <laughs> here are a few coins. You're too kind, Governor. Well, these days, I knows that he lives with his mammy on Hanbury Street, in the same place where Dark Annie bled to death. Oh, well, I've been there. Why did you call him poor Hardiman? Bah! He's in grieving, of course. Just a few weeks ago, he lost his wife. Aww. And three months before that, his girl, poor fella. He was in tatters. He even came to cry on my shoulder, believe it or no, not. No, Hardiman, you can do better. Wait, by girl, does that mean like his mistress or like his daughter? Because if it's his daughter, well, it's sadder. Well, I must leave you. I must so, go to Hungary Street. Sadder? More sad? <laughs> Get out of here, Dapper Dan! Gotta go. Um, Hanbury Street. Where was that? Hospital. Hanbury Street.
This is the building in which poor Annie Chapman was killed. Baby! I found him! <laughs> oh, hey! Baby! Oh, you... you banged... Hello, are you Mr. Hardy? You banged that That's big... That's me. Mean chick. I am Dr. Watson. I have come to see you about Fletcher's Big shop. chicks can be hot. I would like mean to use it for an hour hot. or two. If you have the keys and your rates are reasonable. Do you want to operate on someone in the butchers? Not at all. One of my friends needs it to prepare pig's heads. Well, why not? Fletcher certainly <laughs> oh, wouldn't mind. Even... But there's a problem. Eh. A problem? How so? This morning, the neighbour above broke his key in the door. The old boy must have already had a drink. So? Well, I tried my best to unjam it with Fletcher's spare key, which is pretty thin, and bam, that one broke too. No! Hard luck. But if you have the end of the broken key, perhaps it can be fixed. It must still be upstairs. I didn't pick it up. Fletcher has a key too, so I didn't think it was a problem. Fancy, if I just had another key with a simpler blade, I could copy it. I'm great at odd jobs. Hmm. Fine, I will try to find all of that. I will find all of that. Speak. Well, see you later then. Speak Goodbye, confidently, sir. Watson. It's one of your problems. Wait, where am I going? Just like one of these doors or what? Where am I going? Oh, cat's meat. Yeah, this one. Wait, is this literally where that chick died? Awkward. The stairs, maybe? Oh. Oh, no. But what a... Oh, how dreadful. How dreadful. Wait, is this... Well, this is just, like, his stuff, right? This bag contains butcher's equipment. He's a butcher. My word. These are innards. He's a butcher. Kebabs. The same as Hardiman's. <laughs> so he prepares his meat here. He's a butcher, Watson! Where can I find a key with a simpler blade? On a worthless door, perhaps. Can I pick that up? Whatever that is? No. What about the outhouse out here? Oh, what? This key was oh, left yes. inadvertently. Indeed, there is nothing terribly precious inside. But what I a stench. I think I have the thingies you need. Uh, um... Okay, do I just talk to you then? Hey! Have you found everything I need to remake the key? Maybe. There you go. I think you'll manage with all of this. I'm sure I will, sir. It won't take me long. Don't worry about it, buddy. Say, I think there's some of your business upstairs. Oh, you're right. I ain't had the time to sort it out. Sometimes I'm in such a hurry to prepare my meat that I forget to clean up. But why do it in the stairwell? Awful bleeds bucket loads, they do, as you've seen. Awful. Now, why would I do that in my awfuls? own lodgings? Michael ah, Mus or Michael Mus? But what and about your awfuls? poor neighbours? They owe it to me all the times I've helped them out. And I don't have a shop either. Ah. Say, you sell animal meat, isn't that right? Would you know where I could find a dozen small pig's heads? Yes. The guy who gets me my offal should have some. I'll pay your day's wages if you meet me at Fletcher's butcher shop in two hours with the pig's heads. Here's a little advance. I'll do my best, Doctor. Thank you. The caretaker of another building told us that the place where your mother lives has a reputation for facilitating prostitutes' activities. Is that true? Sure, the doors are never closed. They come through here like it's Paddington Station. <laughs> By the way, I heard about your loss. My condolences. Ta, sir. I saw them <laughs> die slow deaths. My little girl, her face was eaten by the disease. His daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my friend, and please forgive me for bringing up such painful memories. Yeah, Watson, jeez. <laughs> Go, I must do my rounds, and I will look for what you've asked for. As for me, I will go and find Holmes, and yeah, we will go to be? the butchers together. Maybe still on the couch? Let's return to Fletcher's butcher shop. Ah. Your heads are on the block inside. Say, 
You wouldn't be the same chap who bought my whole load the other day. Maybe. It's possible, but if you want to continue to do business together, you mustn't speak of my presence in the area to anyone. Don't worry, my lord. I'll be as quiet as a church mouse. Thumbs up, Hardyman. I control Sherlock Holmes. Hi. What are we doing, Holmes? C <sighs> Holmes, huh. will you explain the reason and rhyme oh, behind well. this masquerade? Elementary. We're going to test we on these, right? We should conduct an experiment that will allow us to answer a simple question. Does the type of weapon used by the killer correspond to a specific profession? Word. And here are our sow's heads. Congratulations, Watson. You're welcome, Holmes, but what do you really want to do? Take up a collection? Yeah, I'm just going to start, you know, hanging them up. It's whatever. Um, okay. Let's look around here. I need something. There is nothing further to find in this room, Watson. However, I need some knives. Our only hope is behind this door. Oh, no. This wheel is broken and prevents the door from sliding. Is there a tool in here that I need? Or... Is this finally going to come in handy? This wheel is broken and prevents the door from sliding. Huh? Uh. This wheel is broken and prevents the door from sliding. Yes, I, I know. There. Oh. This door is slightly raised. Oh. Oh. And then... Oh. Elementary. Yes! While I prepare our experiments, could you find me two knives? A small one, somewhat larger than a pocket knife, with a large, sharp blade. We'll need it to separate the bones large, and to cut through blade. the thick skins. Then find me a long knife that's at least 13 inches long, no shorter, that's sharp and has a thick blade. Fine, Holmes, but I'd like to tell you about Hardiman. Do you know that he prepares his kebabs himself and... That he owns butcher's tools and uses offal? That's obvious, Watson. Pray, <laughs> take my magnifying glass and my rule and get started, Watson. Find me these two knives. Yeah, okay. Ah, fine. I guess. If you don't want to hear about all the stuff I've been doing. Oh? Okay. A knife that's at least... With the rule, I must find a large knife. Size? 13 inches. But that one isn't large. So probably this one. And then a short one with a wide flat blade. Is that what it was? Um, let's look. Uh, small one somewhat larger than a pocket knife with a large sharp blade. Um, mm, that one, maybe? Knives? Here are the knives you asked for. Sweet. Be careful, they're awfully sharp. Holmes, I must say that this experiment is making me rather uneasy, comparing animal heads to these poor <laughs> women. You're right, Watson. We need to figure this, this stuff out, Watson. shocking experiment may help to end this massacre and save other victims. You can be sure of that. Look, these pig's heads are still bloody, which will suit our experiment perfectly. I have a pocket knife and a scalpel with me. With the two knives you just brought me, we have a similar array of weapons as those probably used by the killer. We saw three types of throat wounds on the deceased attributed to this man. Those intended to slit the throat, those intended to decapitate, and the more superficial yet mortal wound that led to the death of the unfortunate victim in Dutfield's yard, Miss Stride. Word. With the help of these four knives, we are going to try to recreate these wounds on the pig's heads and see what we can establish about the weapon or weapons used. We may also be able to rule out Miss Stride as a victim of the killer of the other three. Cool. I control Sheila Kings. Uh... Let's try to use these weapons on this oh, head to okay. obtain a large, deep wound to the throat, like those that were noted on three of the four victims. 
A large, deep wound to the throat. Boop. This little knife is very sharp and has a very wide blade. So... This pocket knife is very sharp, but its blade is too thin. Is of too thin, is what that said. Hilarious. The wound is too shallow. I agree. Oh, shit. Look, Watson. This knife easily penetrates the flesh. Elementary. Yay! Okay. Let's try Experiment to decapitate our victim with these tools, knowing that the killer didn't quite manage to do it. Charming. Charming? Ooh. Look, Watson. This little knife with a wide base can easily slice the vertebrae of our porcine friend. Me? The blade of this pocket knife is too thin to reach the vertebrae. Isn't that a good thing, though? Because it didn't get all the way through. With a scalpel, the wound is too shallow. Bink. This knife with a long blade easily slices the flesh, but cannot dislocate the vertebrae. Beep. No? Uh... Wait. Look, Watson, this little knife with a wide base can easily slice the vertebrae of our porcine friend. So not that one. Elementary. Okay, there we go. Okay. And Let's see three. if these knives can inflict a mortal wound in a you? situation where you? a single quick blow is given. The scenario in question is that of Dutfield's yard. Oh, I haven't even seen you yet, but you look fancy. Uh, one mortal blow. Yeah. Look, Watson, the blade sinks easily into the flesh. Yeah. In using the cutting edge of this pocket knife's blade, I can scrape the skin. Yeah. This particularly sharp blade can make a deep gash with one quick slice. Yeah. It cuts through the flesh easily as the blade is so sharp. Elementary. Woo! Okay. Cool. Select the right knife or knives. Well, the only one that's in all three is this one. That's it, Watson. The big knife. The big knife. With respect to the opinion of the medical examiners who noted that a butcher's knife with a long blade would have caused the eviscerations on some of the victims, we can assume, Watson, that he only used this type of weapon as it is capable of inflicting all of the wounds displayed. Furthermore, the Dutfield's Yard murder remains attributable, for the moment, to the Whitechapel killer, if we are able to explain why the murderer used his knife in a different manner. Why not go there now? We will try to reenact the killer's actions. No, not night. again. Our first objective will Don't be to clarify on me one way or another it's the weird. statements of Constable Smith, as well as this Hungarian by the name of Schwartz. Schwartz. We must also try to find out more about the International Working Men's Educational Club, underneath which the murder took place. Perhaps at the Wasp's Nest. Word. Yes, let's go to Dutfield's Yard or wherever, but quickly. I am in urgent need of fresh air. Aw, Watson. Let's go to the Wasp's Nest. How about we pause? Oh, hey. Well, let's, let's, let's get you out, out of this room, because you're obviously upset. Okay, so we d we did some work today, Watson. We we cut up some pigs. So now we know things. Now we know what to look for. And uh, next time, I guess we will look into the other murders and maybe put some makeup on Watson's face again. Who really knows?